Hey guys and welcome to another video on the Sunstand. Sorry there hasn't been much videos coming through. I've been battling a sickness for a couple of weeks. Um, and as you can tell I've still got it. Um, I've got the energy to make a video though and I kind of need to. There's been some two big headlines coming in the past day or two with Jared Witts extending till 2026 which is another two years onto his contract and Jed obviously getting named in the... Um, starting squad for the match against Western Bulldogs on Sunday afternoon in Ballarat. So we're going to just start with the Jared Witts deal. Now, I'm pleasantly su surprised. Um, we've been developing Ned Moyle so that he can take over Jared Witts soon. I definitely didn't think that Jared had... <clears throat> really, not that he didn't have any more years left in him, that I definitely thought he, he it was coming closer to the finish line than um, anything else, which is obvious with his age, but um, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised that it was two years. I was more looking if it was extending to just be the one year, but I would be pretty confident in saying that after this um, contract extension, he'll probably retire at the end of 2026. But, um, yeah, so he signed a two-year contract extension with Gold Coast. He signed the club till 2026. Um, he's been a mainstay for Gold Coast since heading north from Collingwood at the end of 2016. And obviously is now likely to finish his career at the Suns. Um, he's played 127 of his 167 games with Gold Coast. Um, and barring significant injury, he should achieve life membership by the time he retires, which is great to hear that one of our best captains to lead the club or co-captain will be achieving life membership by the time he retires, unless he doesn't, unless he gets a significant injury that would stop that, but yeah, it'll be great for him. A um, 30 year old has been a colossus in recent years. And along with his fellow co-captain Tuke Miller and former skipper David Swallow was among the first players to sign a long-term deal when the club was allowed it was at its lowest ebb. Witts, um, one of the best and fairest in 2009, has proven himself as well as one of the most consistent ruckmen in the whole competition. I, I remember a couple of years ago, Everyone was putting him in the All-Australian contention along with Max Scorn, which is crazy. Um, he's so far started this season in absolute incredible style. Um, he's earned three AFL Coaches Association votes in the opening round over Richmond. Um, and racked up 12 clearances in the Suns 2-0 start to our season. Um, so, yeah, he's... Like, I don't know, he, he's definitely getting getting on. You, you watch him and you're like, he doesn't have much longer left. But even if, you know, he only plays the whole of this season and half next season and he's more of a player-coach role with Dimmer more than anything in his final year, I think it's better than nothing because he is an incredible leader of this football club and um, I think we are so lucky to have him and um, him teach our younger kids and also being pretty much a great mentor to Ned Moyle, um, which we'll now see Ned get pretty much a good amount of minutes in the rock against the Bulldogs and hopefully he can prove himself and show us why he is the man to take over Jared Witts. But we'll now move over onto Jed Walter being selected for... Um, the Suns squad against Ballarat. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's come back a week early than he's supposed to. Um, yet again, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he was supposed to come back next week, not this week. But Damien Hardwick said he had no hesitation throwing Jed straight into the AFL fire once he had overcome his collarbone injury. Um, Jed was obviously taking the number three in last year's draft and now will debut against the Western Bulldogs in Ballarat Sunday afternoon. Um, the Gold Coast Academy product would have played an opening round if not for his preseason collarbone injury. 
Uh, and speaking to and when who wrote this article? When Michael Whiting. Oh, hello. Why is A4 playing on my phone? No thanks. Um, when Michael spoke to Hardwick on Friday, he said he wasn't wasting any time getting an 18-year-old into the team. Um, Hardwick said that he is coming and taking training by storm once again. We could sit there and be conservative um, and put him in the VFL level, or we could put him in the cut and thrust of AFL level. Let's just get him in there. We think he's going to be a really good player, learn on the job, get great coaching, great feedback, and great experience for him. He's only, only going to get better every game he plays. Now, I would have thought they would have chucked him straight in the VFL. A collarbone injury, I've had a collarbone injury. It's very hard to come back from. You don't really have the strength around your your whole shoulders. It's it's really hard to get your shoulder, depending on which side you broke it, up there. And considering he's a key forward, he's going to be taking a lot of marks up there as well. So, um, as long as he's ready to get the body... Um, it will probably take one of the best um, Bulldogs defenders um, on Sunday afternoon. I would be surprised if they don't. Um, so as long as he's able to put his shoulders on the line and put his body on the line as well and get get straight into it, it'll be good to see. And hopefully he can hold up. We can't really have too many injuries this season. Um and if you didn't see the video on the Gold Coast Suns page, Walter was told by De Dimmer on Thursday. Um, he drove to his house, pretty much told him a lie, saying that Asada was coming down to do a drug test. Obviously, as an AFL player, you need to be available to do random drug tests. Otherwise, you know, you can get fines for not showing up to them or not being available for them. Um, so, yeah, drove to his house, gave him the news. Um... Which was a wholesome video. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you go onto the Gold Coast Suns Facebook page. I'm pretty sure it's on the TikTok as well. Um, to go and watch it. Um, Hardwick also said, It's always exciting as a coach and footy club to reward a player you think is going to be pretty special. I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. I'm sure our fans are too. He's going to be a good player for years and years to come. Um, so yeah, that is... Like, Dim has been quite open and praising Jed Walter from the get-go. You know, he's... Him and Jakey Rogers are our two key draft, play, uh, draft players. If you've been a fan of the club for a, quite a few years, you'd know that... Or even been to open training sessions. Jakey Rogers and Jed Walter were at the open training sessions. Not always partaking in the drills, but was just there with the with the senior lads getting getting adjusted to what it's like. So they've been in and around the senior club as bottom ages for a while. Um, so it's it's no surprise to me that they've <coughs> fit in with the senior boys so well so quickly because they've been around that lifestyle um, ever since they were a high talent pool a couple of years ago. Um, and even, like, they, they've been to pre-game like pre warm-ups. I've seen Jakey Rogers out there kicking the ball out to players in the back line before games before. Um, and this game will also mark the 250th game for Brandon Ellis as well, which is exciting for him. We always love milestone games. I wish the milestone games were at home more than not, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll get the win for um, Brando and, and Jed Either way, but this has been the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Have a good one, guys, and peace.